this is really weird to me. So Jimmy Ward's hurt at least four games. And now the Niners' starting safeties are Talano Hufunga, who has not started many games, and George Odom, who has not started many games. Jaquaski Tart is available. He's just hanging out. He started in the NFC Championship game. The Niners were relying on him, wanted him on the field, had him on the field. Now they don't even want him as a backup, not even practice squad. Why? No one Do wants we Tart. know that he wants to be back? Because I actually yeah. heard this week from a couple different people that Tart – didn't like all the negativity, didn't like the fact that he was framed and wants to move on as well. I don't move know that that's what? the case. Move on to what is what I would say. Well, to Jaquaski. Like, I, I mean, I, I play you, man, somewhere like, else. I mean, I'm sure he wants to play somewhere, but you know, maybe he feels it. like he's, he's got the phone's going to ring in the next couple of weeks. I don't know, but I will say this. And also maybe the Niners are looking at Jaquaski and saying, Hey, look, we like him as a player. But we want to go with guys who are productive interceptors going forward because Tayshawn Gibson has got flaws for days, but he is a very productive uh, interceptor of the football. So maybe they've kind of reassessed where they're at and they want to prioritize, you know, ball skills and, and interception production back there. And maybe they feel like that's a new philosophy. I, I would bet it is actually. I, yeah, I mean, it's hard to criticize the Niners for not going and signing Tart when – the Eagles just cut him, and no other team seems interested at this point. Maybe they'll sign him week two or week three, someone. But right now it's looking like teams know something about Tart that we don't know. I don't get it. I guess teams lose interest in 30-year-old DBs pretty quickly. But it seems like he was in the NFC Championship game. Now you don't want him at all. You have a need. Jimmy Ward's hurt. Like, should be a natural. But He's not. looking more and more like a weak side linebacker to me all the time. That's all I'll say that. He looks like he's got – I didn't study him, but he looked like he put on a few – um, he looks like a like a future weak side backer, like kind of like uh, the guy they had from Florida, uh, Marcel Harris, mm -hmm. who kind of moved from strong safety to weak side backer. I think Tart's making that transition as well. That's my guess. Well, that's some real insight. It makes sense to me because it's got to be some reason why he's not latching on anywhere. I mean, Eagles brought him in. They didn't want him. Seems like maybe he's kind of an old school strong safety at this point in his career. He's not moving as well as he used to, maybe. I thought the Eagles made the best move of any team at the cutdown, trading for Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. I, I, mean, I thought you were going to say picking up Trey Sermon. I'm like, wow, really? Uh, no, no. I was going to say Chauncey Gardner-Johnson is an impact nickel, and I was hoping that even though Womax looked good on the nickel, I was hoping maybe the Niners would use some of their – their uh, you know G Jimmy uh, Garoppolo cap savings on uh, on Gardner Gardner Johnson, but he he goes to the he goes to the Eagles. He runs a little hot, but he's a player. I like the Eagles. I feel like the Eagles and Niners are similar, and the Niners are looking at what the Eagles did last year. Like we can do that. We could definitely do that. We have better players than you. We have the same type of quarterback. I, I, one of those two teams most likely is going to lead the NFC in rushing. I like those two, and then I also like Minnesota. I feel like Minnesota just getting rid of Mike Zimmer. I don't really follow that team, but just from what I've read, the players really didn't like that guy. And now they're really happy all of a sudden. I, that's an easy division, too. Those are the three teams in the NFC I like. O'Connell O'Connell is well thought of, and I had Albert Breer on today on the radio, as you mentioned before, and I asked him, who's your surprise team? He went with the Vikings. Yeah, I mean, that's a down division. Devontae Adams is gone. Um, clearly the – the antagonist in the organization is gone. Everyone's happy. They have a lot of good players still. Dalvin Cook, like them. But I do think the Niners and the Eagles are interesting. Those teams can really dictate with their running game. Those, what did Chris Sims have them both in the NFC Championship game? I think he does. Yeah, but you know, it's funny. The Niners aren't getting a lot of respect around uh, football. I saw Bleach Report came out with their power rankings, they had them like 15th or 16th. People 15, are missing you're it. saying the Niners aren't a top 10 team. Come People on. People are missing it. To me, it's like Trey Lance. Okay, so he's the talk of the league. No one knows what he's going to be. But if he's just a little bit better than Jimmy Garoppolo, how are you not picking the Niners to win the Super Bowl this year? I, I don't know that he's better than Jimmy, but there's a, very real there's a very real chance he's better than Jimmy Garoppolo right now. How are you not picking him? I don't know. At least to win the NFC. I agree because not only that, even if they lose a quarterback for a month, they get another guy they can win games with. So they're the road to the Super Bowl in the NFC likely is going to come through San Francisco the way I see it. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I think they're going to win a lot of games. They match up very well with the Rams. We know that. 
And then the Bucs, that's a great team, but they're losing offensive linemen quickly. And it seems like if the Niners played them soon, uh, what they do play in this season, their D-line would just overwhelm Brady. I don't know. All of a sudden, I'm thinking that the Niners match up really well with everyone in this division, in conference, and that they could go on a run. I like that they brought back Jimmy because they were not going to make the playoffs if freaking Nate Sudfeld had to start two games or more, in my opinion. I mean, all you got to really handicap is this. The Niners were in the NFC Championship game last year, and they're improved. They have Jimmy, and they have Lance. They have Danny Gray. And they have Ray Ray McLeod. They got deeper on deeper offensive line. Uh, you know, they've got a deeper offensive backfield. They're deeper. They added Charvarius Ward in the secondary. They got a true potential number one. They're the only they question, the only way they, they're a little and, backslid on the D line, a little bit. And well, the O line. I think they're a little backslid in the O line, and then maybe it's safety, but Jimmy Ward's coming back. And if Tala Noah Funga is good, they could be better at safety. Right. And I think yeah. Tal I think Hafunga's really good. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. All right. Um, I think we can end the show a little early. Remember to check out Larry's channel later tonight. He's going to be yep. tonight, tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to do it at four o'clock, but we're going to tape it and then we'll play it later on the channel. 